My worry is that a further week is a case of the medicine potentially being worse than the cure. The harm of lockdown, that is, being greater than actually coming out of it. And I think in our health system of the cancer treatments and screening, that isn't happening. Uh, the elective surgeries, uh, that can't uh, happen. Uh, the dentist treatments and the various other procedures from GPs, uh, that aren't able to happen. Before we even get to actually the stresses uh, and the mental health issues uh, that there will be. And that's even before we get to the many thousands actually of businesses uh, and their workers uh, who as lockdown and then level three continues for longer uh, will languish on the dole queue. And I think that's a really important point because once we're out of level four a few days later than we would otherwise have been, it's not like level three is actually any di different. It's as some have said a level 3.9, it certainly isn't a 2.9, it's still a lockdown of sorts that we'll see. And that means actually that health won't be operating normally. In fact in Australia uh, they are already doing things that we won't be doing still under level 3, those uh, procedures that I've already talked about. It also means as I say tens of thousands of businesses uh, and workers uh, will be out of work I think. Uh, because that time really matters, and that uncertainty about the time, I think, really matters uh, as well. Look, finally, comparison is incredibly important. And our cousins across the ditch uh, are having very similar outcomes health-wise. And in fact, now Prime Minister Morrison talks very openly about elimination, but much better economic ones because they have kept their health system open, they have kept the vast majority of their businesses much more open than we have in New Zealand. As I say, all the while getting the same or similar health outcomes. You know, New Zealanders have sacrificed a lot in the last month and done, I think, a tremendous job in self-isolating and social distancing under lockdown-like conditions all around uh, New Zealand. Regrettably, the government hasn't done the groundwork on their side uh, of the bargain uh, to be ready to move to greater freedom uh, this week. Every expert who's come to the COVID-19 committee here at Parliament has now for weeks been really clear on the things that needed to happen uh, in testing, in tracing and in PPE. And regrettably, the government, uh, by its own standards and rhetoric, isn't where uh, it should be on those things. In testing, uh, the numbers were too low uh, for much of the lockdown. And surveillance, that is getting out and testing people who perhaps uh, don't want to be or don't know that they need to be tested, uh, has only really started in the last week. In tracing, uh, we know that uh, the government cannot say uh, what sort of time frame they are doing uh, this in. And a government commissioned report by Dr Aisha Verrill uh, makes quite clear shortcomings to be fixed and that require time over the next few days uh, to do that. In PPE we know and I continue to get feedback from pharmacists, from care workers, from people in hospitals. They don't have the critical uh, equipment and, as I say, PPE that they require. I urge the government to move as fast as possible uh, to do the work it hasn't around testing, tracing and PPE. I think New Zealanders have done their job and the government's got to, to do its uh, as soon as it possibly can so we can move much more quickly into the recovery that I know all New Zealanders want to see.